Hello, and welcome to Law Talk. My name is John Celebrezzi, and I'm the co-founder of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project, as we call it, CZ CLEP for short. Our organization provides continuing education about the judiciary and legislature to attorneys, judges, government officials, and the general public. As a career ed educator, I recognize early on how important legal matters are and, and how they impact our lives. I am the nephew of the late Anthony J. Celebrezzi, who was the popular five-term mayor of Cleveland and a member of President Kennedy's cabinets. As a tribute to his lifetime commitment to the legal process, we dedicate this show. John's special guest today is Lisa Bradley. Lisa is from Lisbon, Ohio, and completed her undergraduate studies in political science and history at Ohio Northern University. This year, she competed on the American Bar Associated ABA Moot Court Team, and next year Lisa will serve as Associate Justice for the ABA team. Let's join John and his special guest, Lisa Bradley. Lisa, welcome to Law Talk. Thank you for having me. You made the trip across the state of Ohio from my favorite law school, Ohio Northern University, which is in the thriving metropolis of Ada, Ohio, right? <laughs> That's right. Anything really exciting going on in Ada today? Um, it wasn't raining, so that was pretty exciting. Oh, okay, well, that, that, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Well, you know, Lisa, on Law Talk, we have the pleasure of, of interviewing uh, legal professionals. Mm -hmm. I mean, lawyers, judges, uh, we have a stenographer on. But I always look forward to this show, and I think, I think you're about the fifth time, fifth one, uh, of the winner of the Ohio Northern Appellant Advocacy and which happened this year, I believe, on April 25th, and I, I had the pleasure of being there to watch you argue the, successfully argue your case. Yes. Um, we dedicate this show to my uncle, Anthony J. Celebrezzi, mm -hmm. who the competition, of course, is named after. So, um, albeit Uncle Tony is not here in person today, I mm -hmm. think he's here in spirit, and I think he's very proud of you for, for this achievement, as we all are. Well, we're going to dig in. I, you see, I got my trusty clipboard with me here, <laughs> so I didn't forget anything. Um, we're going to dig in, if you don't mind, a few questions. And, you know, you're our ball carrier because you knew everything behind the scenes. I just got the, the pleasure of watching you in, the, in your final round. Mm -hmm. But I know there was a lot of work that, to, get, to get you where you were. on. Yes. on so I'm going to start out with a pretty basic question. What is the appellant advoc advocacy competition at Ohio Northern? Um, it's a competition for second and third year students. Um, it's voluntary, so anybody can sign up. It's You don't have to be moot court. I mean, anyone really can sign up for it. Um, we have a competition our first year that everyone has to do, but this one is simply, if you want to do it, you're allowed to sign up and compete. Oh, okay. You say second and third, yes. and you are second, right? I'll be starting my third year next month. Okay. Yes. Okay, so you were actually finishing your second year yes. in April. Okay. Wow. I guess... Harkening back to my own law school days, it seemed like the commodity that was least in least supply was time. Yes. Uh, you still managed to do all this and do your studies. Yes. Okay. Well, that's very <laughs> commendable. All right. Well, so in the namesake of my uncle, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you law students have the opportunity. Can you tell my, my viewers about how many students choose to participate in this every year? Um, it varies from year to year. Well, like um, this, the year you were. Um, this year, actually, only four people signed up. Um, oh. I think with how the timing was is towards the end of the semester, I think a lot of people didn't think they had enough time to do the competition. Sure. Um, but I know the year before, there are like 11 or 12, so it really depends on yeah. the year the competition is and how many people are interested okay. and the timing of when the competition falls. But actually, that makes it, with such a small number, though, that actually puts a little bit more of a burden on you because don't you have to play both roles in this as you work your way through the competition? I mean, yeah. Okay, as, well, you're going to have to remind me now, but the position you won with was what? I mean, we're going to get into it. Um, the position I won the, the argument for the final round right. that I made, I was um, arguing on behalf of the gay couples and saying that every state should require or should let um, gay couples marry uh, according to the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. I see. Gee, that's pretty cool because... Mm -hmm. You did that on April 25th, and just last month the Supreme Court saw it your way. Yeah. You want to put it that way? Yeah. Great. Okay, but somewhere along the line, did you not have to do the other side? 
Yes, originally I argued for the state of Michigan saying that they could define marriage as they wanted to define it and that the, that they could define it the way that they chose to sure. between a man and a woman. Okay, well, that really gets you thinking about this, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. it forces you to compete on either side. Right. So, Okay, well, hearkening back to April 25th, which was a big day for you <laughs> uh, and, and, and your colleagues as well, uh, to win on, uh, on April 25th, 2015, you had to prevail throughout a series of rounds. Uh, how many all together? This year, I just, they just had two rounds, so two I rounds. just I argued each side once. Okay, so you started out arguing, frankly, against the concept. Right. And then you actually won it on the other side. Right. Okay. All right. Um, were the judges different each round? Yes, they had different judges each round. Um, the first round, they had Professor Clark, who was, um, was very tough on me sure. when I was arguing. Mm -hmm. And then the second round, and the final round, was Professor Brandt and Professor Veltri, who are very... Um, good at this oh, yeah. type of these types of issues. Um, Professor mm, no Brandt teaches that. con law, so she was pretty tough on us. Oh uh, yeah, you know that's an interesting. I think I'm going to take just a couple of minutes for the the benefit of of ON, ON, ONU staff, mm -hmm. who I hope see the show, and maybe anybody in the area who's alumni to Ohio Northern. Mm -hmm. um, this competition has been going on for I don't know. Well, my uncle passed away in 1998, mm -hmm. and. I think, I think the last time he was actually, he used to actually judge that. Yeah. I'm going to say it was about 1996 and his mm -hmm. health has deteriorated, but because uh, I used to actually take him, you know, mm -hmm. along. Uh, and after that, I mean, even when Uncle Tony was judging yeah. the competition, always the final round, mm -hmm. uh, he would be flanked by usually two judges, sitting judges. Uh, generally of, of, of the appellant, of uh, mm -hmm. the third district I think you have up there in, yeah. in Ada. Uh, and we did it that way for a long time. And mm -hmm. then even when Uncle Tony passed away, w uh, we had judges that would come from the Toledo area. The, uh, Judge Routson once came from Finlay. Yeah. But last year was, and well, I guess you would have been a first year mm -hmm. last year, but it was the first year that I had witnessed that we had faculty doing mm -hmm. it. And I mentioned to the dean, as sort of an interested person, I said, you know, I really like this. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I felt that the two professors really put you guys through your paces. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I thought you, you you did beautifully. And in my vote, for what it's worth, because you know we should do this every year. Now I don't know that it was my great influence that caused this to happen, right. but there was you know your two professors up there, and mm -hmm. um, um, I, I think it's just great to, to do yeah. it that way. I mean, it's a uh, Okay, so you went through, you, you did both sides, you had two <laughs> rounds, uh, you did all this while you're doing your studying, um, and actually you're coming up pretty close to exams at the time of the, right. you know, whatever, uh, of the competition. But the case, uh, this year's problem dealt with the case of, is it De Debor? Debor, yes. Debor versus Snyder. The issue being whether this, uh, the state is required to license a marriage between same sex, between a same sex couple. Right. All right. I mean, this is the crux of it. It's easy for me to ask you mm -hmm. this question. It was not easy for you to do battle with your your colleague there, who also did an absolutely yes. excellent job. I mean, I don't think I consider you both winners, <laughs> but I mean, somebody had to win and somebody had to lose. And uh, so here we go. Mm -hmm. I guess I I, I I give myself a lot of credit. And my the, the little tagline on my my question then. What does this mean? Right. I mean, what is what? Tell tell my viewers, the outcome now is here. What is what? What is the issue in in Debor versus Snyder? Right. Um, there are a couple issues, but the issue that we had to deal with and argue was whether or not the Fourteenth Amendment required each state to license a marriage between a couple of the same sex. Um, there's also the issue of whether or not states would have to recognize other states' marriages, but that's not something that we had to argue for the purposes of the competition. Um, but Simply, you know, the decision came down, and it, you yeah. know, the Supreme Court decided that every state does have to recognize marriage, and they have to allow couples to marry, regardless of their same sex or opposite sex. And the Fourteenth Amendment, they said, was um, the reasoning behind why they came with, down with that decision. Sure. Wow. I mean, they're all good. I mean, mm -hmm. every every I've been doing this for a number of years, and not only the shows, but when I would actually bring my uncle. Mm -hmm. But. This time it almost seems like, I don't know, a landmark is the word I'm looking yeah. for. Uh, I mean, 
several years ago, I believe in the state of Ohio, uh, there was a constitutional amendment voted upon by the people, and I think the outcome at the end of the day was this, this state did not permit it. Is that right. correct? Right, right. Okay, so now within the last 30 days or so, mm -hmm. the, the Supreme Court of the United States says, no, we, we don't agree with that. You know, Ohio and everybody else is mm -hmm. going to let gay folks get married if that's what they want. Okay, uh, so that's kind of what this was all about. Now, here's a academic question for you. <laughs> How come the people of Ohio went to the voting box? I, it was, I'm going to guess it was somewhere around 2004, but I, mm -hmm. I, I got to be close. It was a right. presidential election, I'm pretty yeah. sure, uh, because I remember mean, it was a big turnout. And mm -hmm. It was a lot. It was a lot in the paper about it, and you know the media. But I mean, when the people of Ohio say, "No, we don't want it," right? You, you know, gay folks, we're not going to recognize you. But then the Supreme Court comes along and says, "Yeah, well, they are." Right. Okay. Well, I think I know who won, who won here, mm -hmm. but tell my viewers why. I mean, the Supreme Court decided that it was a federal issue, and they decided. And once the Supreme Court makes that decision, it doesn't matter if Ohio or Michigan or any other state says that couples of the same sex can't marry. It's the law of the land now, and because the Supreme Court said that, that means Ohio and every other state before that said that wasn't allowed. It has to be allowed now. So I guess maybe um, in law school sometimes we use the word trump and if you play right. cards. So once you get a big old Supreme Court decision, it just trumps. Right. Okay. Right. And, and, and it's true that from at least what I read off of the internet, within days of, of, of this decision, local courts, courthouses have to issue, mm -hmm. they, they were actually issuing licenses. Yeah two folks and, and gay couples were getting married. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple in Dayton got married just a few days after the decision came down. Oh. And so I've heard of a couple of different places where couples in Ohio were getting married wow. after the decision. Yeah. So truly, well, I guess you didn't have much say in the, the case you got, but now for the rest of your life, you'll always look back. Your, your, your case was big time here, yeah. I mean, as far as landmark case. Okay, well, let's go on here a little bit. It's kind of an interesting topic. Um, I got here, what is the legal significance of the case? Um, you know, what side did you represent? I mean, we already talked about mm -hmm. what side, but again, not to beat a dead horse, but the legal significance of it, I think, is like any other Supreme Court, at mm -hmm. least the way you've described it, is that these nine folks, and you're going to need five of the nine to right. uh, you know, write a majority, when they rule everybody gets in line behind them, I mean, right. regardless of your, your state issues. Um, it takes a while to get to the Supreme Court. I mean, people, I, I think maybe as a law student, you're well aware of this, and <laughs> I know I am, but you don't just bring a case to the Supreme Court willy-nilly. I mean, it right. starts in the lower courts and it works its way up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the court, it, actually the court is somewhat selective on the cases that they will take, and then I actually we knew on April 25th, mm -hmm. I mean, we were amongst uh, your, the folks I was talking to as I was getting ready to observe you, we were all suggesting, well, we're going to know this summer. So, right. you know, this was probably one of the last decisions that they made before the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and then take, takes off this summer. I think they come back in October. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, let's see what else I got here for you, Lisa. You're, you're, you're batting a thousand here so far. <laughs> you're doing great. Uh, all right. Well, you actually represented both sides, but yes. the, the one you won with was exactly what you must have. Well, they say great minds run alike, Lisa, <laughs> so you, you should be very proud of yourself. And, 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 and your Ohio Northern faculty who mm -hmm. guides you. Uh, has the Supreme Court ruled on this case? And obviously they had, and the final disposition was... Gay marriage in the state of Ohio is as legal as any other type of marriage, right? Right. right. Okay, so let's talk about two people getting married. Mm -hmm. Marriage is still something that is controlled by the state of, well, let's just say state of Ohio, not right. by the state. So states could still require a license. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I, I believe so, yes. Okay, all right. So... Well, even when I got married 44 years ago, you had to go get a license. Yeah. And there was a fee that you paid for that license, mm -hmm. which I assume it is. It's probably went up a little bit in the last 44 years. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is determined by the state of Ohio. Okay. Yes. 
But so all of that sort of thing, those regulations still remain in the hands of the state. But nothing could be done. That the state obviously can never come along and say, well, look, it's $15 for a license for, you know, heterosexual, but for homosexual people, it's 5000 Right. That's not going to happen. No. Okay. All yeah. Right. Um, this kind of harken back to civil rights days and whatnot. Right. Okay. So how long you wait between the time you get your license, how much your license costs, where you go to get them, I think in our county you go to the probate court, mm -hmm. that all still remains under the state, the state issue. But one classification of people that was barred before mm -hmm. were same sex and, and right. now it will be, uh, the, as you say, the law of the land. Okay. That's pretty, it's very interesting, yeah. actually. Have you, I mean, I, I'm going to bird walk a little bit and I'll get right back to the, the text of what I'm reading here, but I mean, this, this had to be something that you, even with your busy schedule as a law student and mm -hmm. working, sort of kept your eye on the media to see how this one came yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, after arguing both sides, it was really cool to actually listen to oral arguments that were made before the Supreme Court and see if they were making the same arguments we were making for the competition. And was, since, we under, uh, since I understood the issue a little sure. bit better, since I did all the research, it was really cool to see yeah. or follow along and see what would happen. Yeah. Well, I guess it's something that truly something that marks your experience as your, your law, school, law school years as being very, very special. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, uh, I, I don't make a point of asking personal questions. Mm -hmm. I hope you don't take it as a personal question, but any of your friends maybe in the gay community or anybody mm -hmm. who knows somebody, did anybody have any comments about this that that you were you were taken by? or? Um, none that I can think of. I, I know this was a very obviously important issue sure. to a lot of different people. It's been a topic, you know, for a long time now. So I think a lot of people were very excited that mm -hmm. the Supreme Court finally did decide to sure. listen and decide. So yeah. um, that's pretty much it, just people recognizing the fact that the Supreme Court finally decided to listen to this issue that's been Amongst so yourselves as law students did, uh, I mean, I, I can remember having discussions with my colleagues and whatnot when I went to law school. Did you predict? I mean, did you, did you have a gut feeling or how you thought it would come out? Yeah, I actually thought that this is the way it was going to come really? down. Um, and I figured Prof or, um, Justice Kennedy would be the one to write the decision because reading con law and different cases, seeing in law school, you, um, Justice Kennedy wrote a lot of these sure. decisions about gay marriage issues in the past. So, um, yeah, a lot of my friends, we would talk about it and decide or th talk about what we thought sure, that the Supreme sure. Court would decide. Well, that's so. a fun. That's that is one. Try to predict what they are going to do. Good aspect, fun mm -hmm. aspect of being a law student. That you know you can do this. So you you can honestly tell my all my viewers now you're not you're not joshing us. You really thought it was going to come down the way you did. Well, I I thought it was going to come out that way, but I thought it was going to be close. I wasn't sure if they were actually going to require every state to allow gay marriage, or if they were just. I figured at least that they would make each state recognize marriage sure. from another state. I so I thought it was going to be close, and I'm we were right. It was a five four decision, and I mean it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you were. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's shift gears to the academics. You obviously are a law student and mm -hmm. a doctoral candidate as we speak. Um, all goes good in your life. You'll be graduating in May of 2016. Yes. And do you intend to take the bar exam next year? Yes, next July. I want to take okay. the Ohio bar. Okay. Well, that's a wonderful experience. I wish you the <laughs> best on that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what class? What class in law school covers what we're talking about here today? Right. I mean, we talk about constitutional issues in a lot of different classes, okay. but obviously the one the most would be constitutional law. So as a law student, you actually have to take a class in constitutional law? Yes, we have to take. There's two sections that are offered. We have to take the first section. The second section, we don't have to, but they, re they recommend it because that's okay. what they said is most li likely to be tested on the bar. So students at Ohio Northern are still under the semester system? Yes. Lisa, so it would be the, the mandatory one is three semester hours? Yes. Okay, and then you have the option of three more of in the spring. Yeah, in the to spring. take part two. Okay. Did you did you take this already, or I have not taken part two yet. I'm actually taking it next oh, spring. Oh, okay. Well, that's going to be that much more interesting to you, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, we'll definitely have to read this. I'm sure. Yeah. So actually, in, in that in the first part, though, I mean, you you studied landmark. I mean, we talk about the word landmark a lot here today, but <laughs> you know, I but I mean, voting rights. Uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, mm -hmm. I mean, this is separate but equal, all things that, you know, you, we even studied in history, right? whatever. 
your case now is going to actually fall in with that category of case. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I think mean, it's like major cool, isn't it? That yeah. You, you argued something and, and predicted it. Yeah. Mm, wow. Boy, Lisa, when you get to the job market, <laughs> people are going to be looking for you. <laughs> All right. Well, Constitution also shows that the, the second part of the question is so obvious. It's, it's obvious. <laughs> it's obvious, but Constitution issues are important to attorneys. Well, let's just talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit uh, because I, th I think we should. I, before I came to do this show, I, I actually was visiting with one of my clients. Uh, it was a criminal case that we're talking about. And we're, the guy is, is facing a, fe a felony drug charge. Mm -hmm. And we, we really got into a discussion here this morning about uh, search and seizure. I right. mean, uh, did the police have the right to search that car? Did they not? And of course, this stuff. I think ad nauseum law students look at all the time, but right. but here again, as a practicing attorney and a prospective practicing mm -hmm. attorney, these are the paramount issue. I mean, it would pretty fair bet to say, well, okay, how could we do this? I mean, I, as I discussed it with my client today, and I even explained it to him, he says, this is a Fourth Amendment issue. Right. You have the right to privacy. Uh, the, the state cannot search you willy-nilly. We may have an argument, and if we could win on that argument, mm -hmm. it's going to throw out the evidence that, right. was ref that is against you, and you may get the result you're looking for. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we take that scenario, which most of us criminal defense attorneys wind, wind up on a search case, yeah. if you miss one, it would be pretty significant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it turns up all the time. Uh, and things like Miranda and whatnot, but I mean, it sort of fall in with that, but... Could you tell my viewers, and this is maybe a little attenuated because it's so new, mm -hmm. but in your career, and we hope you have a long, long, <laughs> great career, how someday you might actually use this case as an attorney? I'm, I mean, as a future attorney, this is a, a huge case. We keep yeah. saying it's a landmark decision. But how would it, the guy comes to you? My guy came through my door. Well, actually, I met him at the jail. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, your client... Well, I assume you wouldn't meet him at the jail, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. your, your client comes through the door with what type of uh, an issue to put before you that might take us back to what you successfully argued here. Right. I mean, there might be an issue like we talked about before, if a state's, you know, has lower prices for a couple, of, you know, a oh. man and a woman, and then they're saying, you know, you have to pay this much more if you're a same-sex couple. So, I mean, that's, I think, an instance where oh, yeah. you can use this. And Great you say, yeah. Yeah. So, Perfect. I mean... There could be a ton of different issues that could come up with this in the future, and I'm sure there will be issues that come up that well, they're going to be looking to this case and saying, hey, you can't, you're not allowed to do that. Well, yeah, because, I mean, the old song, we've only just begun. I mean, mm -hmm. just because the Supreme Court says, that doesn't mean the good folks in all the legislatures in all 50 states who are elected by the electorate, right. the same people who passed that constitutional mm -hmm. amendment we discussed earlier, won't be leaning, lobbying their lives. Right. Well, you know, we don't like this. I mean, yeah. and also, won't it also go back to the kind of the roots of our country, at least in a way, mm -hmm. of of the um, the First Amendment religious issues? I mean, there are, there are some churches that don't recognize. Right. Okay. And I think that is something. And I think that, like we were just saying, you know, just because the Supreme Court made this decision doesn't mean that people aren't going to still have issues with this. Sure. I mean, it was a 5-4 decision, so that shows that even the justices were split on yeah. which way they should come down. And so I think that there will potentially be religious issues sure. if, you know, a certain church doesn't feel comfortable, you know, having a same-sex couple get married in their church. So I don't think this is over. I think that there's still going to be debate over every aspect of this. So I think that there's still going to be discussion of this in sure. the years to come. It's an emotional one. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's prob probably as emotional no, maybe not. I don't know. It could be a, as the whole abortion issue, yeah. which we are still talking about Roe v. Wade for right. 40 years or whatever. And yeah. um, there's still nuances that come out of the legislature. So mm -hmm. so you could meet this again in your career. Absolutely. I think that that's a very high possibility of happening. Well, to all prospective clients, <laughs> Lisa won the Celebrity <laughs> Boot Competition. So she, she knows. 
I, I'm just kidding with you. We got to keep a little <laughs> levity here, but it is, it's really a, a kind of fascinating topic, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was the most difficult part of the competition for you? Let's get back to business here. Um, I think the most difficult part um, was the fact that we were given the briefs that were submitted to the Supreme Court by the parties. Okay. And I mean, they were like 70, 80 pages long. So to go through that and to try to get, you know, a few good points to argue in a little amount of time. Sure. And I've done a lot of boot court competitions, and I've always found that it's a lot easier to do the arguments when you write the brief yourself. I so see. using someone else's, you know, brief, it's a little bit more difficult because sure. you're handed this problem as opposed to doing all the research and everything yourself. I see. So I think going through the briefs, having not written them, was a little bit difficult. But once I was able to get through them and get the facts, I thought it was pretty straightforward after that. Okay. Well, I can see that. I mean. Yeah. Okay. I see our cl our clock is running out, but I I, I would like to. Yes, kind of close with this question. Mm -hmm. There's only four of you that that chose to participate, and, right. and it's it's understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that you did, I mean, and, and it's great that you won as well. Mm -hmm. But how do you think this helps you in your your future law career? I mean, I think any time that you have an opportunity to practice and you know do a moot court competition or an appellate argument, I think you should do that because. Personally, I want to be able to go litigate and be in the courtroom. So any type of experience I can do, you know, doing that, I'm going to do. And plus, this type of argument, you really had to see the issue from all different sides yeah. and angles. And just being able to, you know, come up with a good argument for your side and also be able to be prepared for what the other side's going to say, I think, is very important. That's something, as a future lawyer, I'm going to be doing every day. So, so in your case, and I asked the question to you, mm -hmm. obviously, you, I mean, all of us that practice law practice in various and sundry areas, but you are interested in being a litigator. You want you yes. want to be in the courtroom. Yes. You want to be before a judge and a jury. Yes. Okay. You realize there's some of your some of your colleagues at Ohio Northern aren't at all interested in this, and <laughs> then they'll make a point of never going. Yeah, I've heard a lot of them say that okay. to me too. Okay. <laughs> well, God bless you. I mean, that's uh, uh, for that that's a wonderful aspiration. I will tell you this. Uh, I can tell you this firsthand as a member of the Celebrezzi family, and I'll be mm -hmm. at my my uncle had a long career, uh, frankly, I hate to say it as a non-lawyer, but I mean, he was mayor of Cleveland, he was right. in the president's cabinet and whatnot. But in his day, he was one heck of a trial lawyer. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's, uh, I think that's um, why we're always so pleased to recognize people. And, well, Lisa, yeah. thank you for being my guest on Law Talk Thank you today. for having me, I and appreciate I wish, it. I wish you the very best for another great year at Ohio Northern University. Thank you. Comments made by John's guest on Law Talk are solely those of his guest and do not necessarily reflect the views of Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project. To view this show and others, go to www.czclub.org. At CZ Clip, we're devoted to the education of today's legal issues. Fueled by the public's keen interest in our legal system and current events, CZ Clip is dedicated to the educational venues aimed at enhancing the understanding by all citizens, regardless of age, education, occupation, or wealth. A function of the Celebrezzi Zangi Community Legal Education Project.